viewers of Wasteland TV. We are here with Ed Annunziata. What does Ed Annunziata do? I make video games. Still? Yes. What is your current video game you're making? Uh, I'm making a new dolphin game. There's a work in progress right over there. You can check it out. Well, what system? Uh, all, hopefully. Are you the owner of the, of the uh, uh, dolphin game? Yes. And the lead designer. So how does it feel to be one of the character people to own their own Sega property? Uh, it feels natural. Yeah, because I know a lot of the characters are owned by Sega itself and they've never resurfaced a lot of those characters like that. Yeah. I really want to see another Shinobi. And you know what else? Uh, what, Shinobi Fantas one of your games? No, no. But it's a game I love. Uh, Fantasy Zone, which was a weird shooter. Uh -huh. I'd like to see that reboot. In fact, I would like to reboot that game personally. So, uh... How do you how do you like the idea that the eight bit never really died? I love that idea. You never know, because will. when you think about it, we went through this phase where everyone was, oh, eight bit, that's so gross, that's so ugly looking, and then all of a sudden it had a big resurgence and it's never disappeared since. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like the Dreamcast. Out of all the Sega systems, that's the one system that never really died. Yeah. They don't make games for it, but it has a big fan base worldwide. Oh, yeah. So. What did it? What, what games did you contribute to Sega? Sorry. What games did you contribute to Sega? Uh, well, Echo the Dolphin, um, Three Dirty Dwarves, Mr. Bones, Colibri, which is the hummingbird game on the 32X. You like um, a lot of animal games, huh? A lot of animal games, a lot of Marvel games. Spider-Man versus the Kingpin, uh, the X-Men on the Genesis, and Clone Wars, which was X-Men 2 on the Genesis. Um, and a bunch of other games too. Abrams Battle Tank, 688 Attack Sub, California Games. So you In fact, California Games, I worked with um, some guys in Budapest, Hungary, and they did such a good job, I hired them to work on Echo the Dolphin. So, are you surprised that Echo the Dolphin still uh, has uh, staying power? Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised in a way. Um, but I'm, I'm happy people still like it. Do you get upset when people say it's not a hard game? It is a hard game. It no. is? Yeah, it's very It's too hard. Because it hit the water, is the, the water, uh, the breathing is the hard part with it, going yeah. up for air all the time. Yeah. Was that your idea for it? Sure. <laughs> yeah, but then, that, but then during the uh, 80s era, every game was experimental. Yeah. I well, work. you know, in the game, though, uh, when you get halfway through the game, you get a power-up where you don't have to surface anymore. Oh, you get god mode, huh? Yeah. It's kind of like I worked on Wild Woody, and that was uh, considered, that's considered the hardest uh, Sega CD game ever made. Oh, yeah. That's a fun idea for a game, though. Yes. And also, it's, it's one of those questionable titles that you kind of wonder how they got it past the censors. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So... What is, uh, what was the first game you did? Uh, the first, like, commercially viable yeah. game that was published was in the early 80s. It was called Pyramid Run. It was on the Atari 800 uh -huh. computer. And if I, anyone remembers that. <laughs> was that. Nobody remembers that because it, uh, you know. I don't think there's even one in the museum over there. Yeah, no, there's not. There's a lot of Atari systems, but I don't think that's one of them that Chris ever It was a found. computer. It wasn't really a home oh. console. But, but it had the same CPU as the home console did. Yeah. But it's funny, though, is that some of, some of the home consoles that they did tended to be computers as well as home consoles. Sure. Like the Atari you know? Yeah. No, I'm talking about, like, or Commodore they 64. were designed. Yeah, the Commodore 64 was designed technically to be a game system, not a computer. Yeah. It's like a game system with a keyboard. Yeah, or the Amiga was first. It came out as a uh, game system, not a uh, um, what's it called, not a not a art platform, which it ended up becoming like a, a demo art. Yeah, which which it found its feet in the porn industry, which is funny. Of course. And then it backlogged into Hollywood. Um, Do you so, have an Amiga? Oh, I started on the Amiga as an artist, a oh, video yeah. game artist. 
And I've always, I've, and as, as time passed, I found different uh, little mugs of trivia about, about the system. Yeah. I still own it. Okay. I still I got the bouncing ball. Yeah. I never had an Amiga. I had an Atari ST, though. I never had one of those. I played on the Amiga, IBM, and then Photoshop on IBM, and that, and pretty much stayed with them. Because after, after the gaming industry changed, I didn't feel like learning 3D, so I went into photography. You know, you, you, because a video game artist only has so many years, and then they change uh, programs and everything, and then you got to relearn, go almost yeah. go back to school again. Yeah, it's probably true with everything. Yeah, because it's like you got to do, uh, like they say, you do three years worth of work, and it's five years. Yeah, it's a very stressful thing. You're not if you're not used to it. Yeah. So. Um, what 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 parts? Of, what did you do other than uh, producer? Did you did you work as artist, game designer? Yeah, designer, designer. Ah. And just general wise ass. Ah. So what is your favorite hat you wear? Um, I have a little cap that reminds me of my dad, but I don't have it here. Like oh, I'm saying business way. work wise. Since, oh, okay. Yeah, you know, since um, in the computer, since in the back in the day, you had multiple jobs actually. Yeah. I, you know, I, I do, I like um, just working with people that are really into making the games. So uh -huh. being a producer or just a project manager, uh, it's probably my favorite part. Uh -huh. Of course, it's enjoyable to conceive and come up with ideas and then see them come into existence. Um, but that's, uh, that's more like ego. It's much more satisfying when uh, everybody's in sync, working really well. Like, I knew the whole Wild Woody team. And, you know, those people were great together. They loved working together. You knew together. Mimi Doggett. Uh, yeah, Mimi, and Tom Rudadal, and all those people. Yeah. Um, and that, that's really where the rubber meets the road. It's the, the relationships between people and how well they work together. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's my favorite part. So did you... Uh, with with Echo, what made you come up with the idea for that one? What what what? What made you come up with the idea for Echo the Dolphin? Uh, I, I worked on a um, I worked on a project uh, in New York uh, called uh, Voyage of the Mimi. It was a PBS TV show uh -huh. about a little boy, Ben Affleck's first professional role. He was like uh -huh. maybe eleven. He goes on a schooner or like a like a boat, his grandfather's boat, for the summer, and they study uh, sperm and, whales. And he didn't look at the sperm whale. Go, I'm Batman. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to be Batman. Then. No one expected to be <laughs> Batman. <laughs> anyway, because um, he tended to play the villain in all the, in, a, in a lot of his early roles, and that like those uh, teen films like uh, Mallrats and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. He was always the villain character, and he jumped to the romance, yeah. and then he became the action hero. Yeah. I like the one, the accountant. I like oh, that, that was one. a good film. I enjoyed that with him. Yeah, it was. It didn't get a good, good response in the theaters, but I enjoyed it because it was very Batman esque. Yeah, more Batman esque than the Batman films were. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that got me into thinking about whales and thinking about um, echolocation and the idea that that whales are as smart as people. In fact, they communicate and have relationships. They have jokes. They have their own culture. So I got sucked into the whole idea. It's like, how could I make this into a video game? Uh, and then the play mechanic idea of going in and out of the water, side-scrolling play mechanic, once I prototyped that, um, then I knew I knew right then that that's, that's a good play mechanic. So then I, I built the whole game story around that. So uh, my, my friend uh, Katie was saying, who's helping me move my table over there, she was thinking it was because of the Douglas Adams story, because they go up to space. Yeah, no. That was her theory. But before then, I love that Doug Douglas Adams. In fact, uh, the improbability drive, there's one part in uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxies, the improbability drive, which powers their ship, would randomly create things. And there's one part in the book where a sperm whale was created high in Earth's orbit, and it came down, flaming down, and died. And I was blown away by that. Uh, I was like, why? But yeah, she was, because uh, 
she was she, she listened to some stuff about your game and uh, and she was telling me it sounds more like uh, a Douglas Adams game uh, based uh, type theme. Yeah. But now there's another book called The Sounding by an author whose name was Hank Searles. Seals or Sears, I don't know, the sounding. And it's about the protagonist is a sperm whale. Um, and the whole story is from the point of view of the sperm whale. When I read that, that's what that's what really brought it home for me. Not the Star Trek Voyage of, Home. No, where no, they got the whales? This a, a decade before that movie I know, came out. It's, but it's just it kind of funny time how, how many uh, how many uh, in that period followed that trend with ant whales and dolphins and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, before it was only just flipper. Yeah. And then it expanded into space with them and a, a tie into the, the to the galaxy, how they fit into the universe. Yep. Any last words you'd like to say to the Wasteland audience about games and game design? Um. It's fine to say, 8-bit rules! 8-bit <laughs> rules! <laughs> I don't know. I have nothing to say. I'm too tired. Sorry. I am too. Yesterday was a lot. Feel me. free to delete this video. Or, or not. No, I'm not going to delete it. I leave it all in its entirety. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, nice to talk to you.